sorry, brain yeah. surgery. All right. Let's... I mean, we got to do it before I have to go to bed. <laughs> all right, all right. So we're doing a little impromptu fifth topic going on here. The big brain. You've been willing to talk about this for a bit now. So as we look around today, mm. we look... I believe we are at the beginning of the end. I feel a like very long everybody smell What? <laughs> a very long beginning because it's been like two years. <laughs> no, I mean, I mean, like, like, like the, the, I mean, I. Depends on that. Depends on uh, mm. when you when you count the end. But I'm like, like, th this is what this is when the fall is gonna gonna start accelerating. This this. We're see we're seeing the uh, columns crumble right now. All right. Um, but I, I think everybody can start. We're, I, th I think everybody's just starting to smell the blood in the water. Mm. I mean, well, I mean. All right. So that's smelling it. We're, we're starting to see blood, and then that's because, like, ooh, those stock. Hmm. I, I heard Disney just shot down twice, like, like in the past few weeks, and it's like, ooh. All right. It's not great, hmm. but. As we, as, as we look across us, we, we, we're, we're just seeing just a modicum of the uh, mainstream media just hmm. really starting to eat itself alive. Um, and I think at this point, we're, we're starting to... I'm just talking in circles right now. But what we're starting to see them start to go into a rap, more rapid decline. All right. Disney is looking is losing stock and money at the Wazoo. Um, like, let, let's see, on, on, on the top and then not on, on, even on the bottom and just look at the game stream. Was, like, IGN is going to, is, is buying up just hordes of smaller public, smaller game journals publishers. And, uh, Hmm. IGN, I, I think IGN is just gonna buy up all the stuff and just take it with it as it dies. Because I, I, I think uh, AI oh. is gonna like replace games journalists because everybody hates games journalists and they make and they make no money. <laughs> um, people are gonna use AI to write the reviews now. <laughs> you gotta bring up topics and stuff like that. Oh, okay. All right, chat GPT, write write me a, a negative review about uh, I don't know uh, what's a what's a popular game as the latest Call of Duty. I mean, game. not not like a review, maybe not, not like a no, not a review. You know, uh, Chang is because okay. like review people don't go to gaming sites anymore for reviews. Pe oh, people yeah. people go to like the the reason Kotaku had to like cut out most of its staff is because uh, they were changing their entire. You know their entire um, objective to focus on making guides because that's what mm. IGN is. IGN is only afloat because of the guides they create. Mm. Okay. Yeah, because yeah. it's I mean, and uh, mm. really AI, AI is gonna, just gonna. I feel like AI is gonna AI is gonna play an interesting part in the future of the of the uh, media. Hmm. I've, I've, but that's that's a little bit later in this talk. Um, what do you guys think? Uh. Hey, I, mean, <laughs> hey, I. I don't know. I don't. I. I don't know. I I'm not really really paying attention to like fall of mainstream media that much. Just kind of been doing my own thing it's uh a lot. but like i mean there, there, you, once it does it's gonna affect you true Certainly. i mean like you do see like you do see though like the current state of like a lot of like industries nowadays and you see like man things aren't uh aren't really looking you know too good like uh <laughs> and with and with uh Time's becoming tough. The first thing that's going out hmm. is is media. 
So only so only the best is going to survive, and when you don't have anything good, you're not going to be bought. Hmm. Which means that companies are even going to be lose a lot more money. Hmm. Like I, I hear yeah, Disney talking about how, how they like like there's an there, there's also like some something interesting like like with it like uh organizations that don't change leadership and organize and that leadership is making all the wrong decisions they'll just keep making those wrong decisions infinitely yeah. until they crash the thing because they think if they do those things they'll mm-hmm. save it like Disney is just it's on a spending spree or, and that's costing them hordes of money they billion dollars in a Star Wars billion dollars in a Fox uh, they're they're looking to buy up some anime stuff the question is are they going to spend another billion dollars on it or are they going to fall before that happens mm. or w- will a coup happen and then the leadership will change oh uh, you know I'm reminded now though of like uh, a lot of stuff going on with like the gaming industry uh, a lot of a lot of very interesting decisions being made by all these companies like, like, I, 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 like, uh, there, like, uh, there was just that one week, like, I think it was the week of the whole, like, Helldivers 2 situation going on. Yeah. Like, just, just that week, all these companies came out with, like, all these, like, really, exactly. like, 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 very bold, I must say, uh, decisions. It's like they're, it's like they're trying to outcompete each other for how like, dumb they can make them. Like, uh, yeah, it was, it was the stupidity Olympics. <laughs> Like uh, like 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 you know, there was a whole Hell Divers two situation, and then uh, oh then you know uh, we oh, yeah, we were talking about just like very very like for a second second there with uh Ninja Theory being bought up by Microsoft, <laughs> and that just reminded me oh yeah like Microsoft their decisions going on right now, like, uh, like mm. it's like this was uh, I think. I think the the hardest thing about this whole thing is that as like when you got this this the the trial the like the trial when they you know the, the FTC trial mm. um, when they bought out Bethesda really speaks a lot now uh, when you know like when you know that uh they weren't buying up Bethesda essentially just to be a monopoly they were buying up Bethesda because they were planning on closing those studios mm. most likely yeah uh, yeah like, like this whole liquidation mm. uh this whole liquidation parade is is, is cynical in in how like and how much uh, it seems like the big two are trying to squash uh, indie indie developers because mm. you get great indie independent uh, teams like Arrowhead and Tango yeah. who like uh, who really are you know, seem like they are leading you know the next step into gaming and they're cut off from their knees because the big two are afraid. Uh-huh. And they have, they have every right to be because uh, at, after they collapse, which probably going to happen, but they're still probably going to be around, but just in a diminished state afterwards, hmm. they're no longer going to have a monopoly. Like it's consoles are, are this is going to be one of the last few generations of consoles. I think we can agree on that. Like mm. it's starting to. I would disagree. Uh, it's. I, I think. Well, I. I take co- Xbox and PlayStation at least. At the very least, Xbox. As of right and now, yeah. It, it, like, he, they they can always bounce back, but the, that requires a massive change in leadership. It, it's uh, essentially both companies. Uh, the leadership needs to be. Mm having a new attitude and out of the two big two in the west that is most likely and most needs to change it would be sony Mm. because uh sony's gaming division is the one that's propping up the company 
in general. If like if if the video game division of Sony falls, there goes Sony in general. Hmm. Um, Microsoft could just simply close uh, a lot of like the big Xbox divisions. Just keep the developers. Yeah, they they make most of their money on uh, PC and other stuff like that. Hmm. They don't. Right. They're not. All, they're the gaming stuff. Is just an, is just a big add on. Yeah. But it's the way they're handling. Sorry. Yeah, Xbox is more of pocket change to Microsoft. Yeah, and I think one of the reasons why it's uh, we're getting more cons- Xbox is becoming more concerned with the bottom line is that because of the acquisitions they had with Activision and Bethesda. Bethesda. Yeah, it's like, oh yeah, you just now bought, had like two big multi-million dollar pur- purchases. <laughs> yeah. You better make that back. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's the people in charge of Xbox trying to keep themselves out of trouble. Mm. Um, because like Microsoft, like the, the amount they spent for Bethesda and whatnot and Blizzard is nothing compared to how much revenue they make overall. Mm. But it's still not a good look if people like Phil Spencer and I forget her name spend billions of dollars on stuff and have nothing to show for it. Yeah. Right? And Nintendo... Investors, investors wouldn't be happy with that. Mm. And we all know that the invest in the uh, corporate world, the investors are God and we are just their pitiful servants. Mm. Um, but Nintendo is probably just going to be they're doing what they're doing. Yeah. Um, Col- it's, fair to, it's fair to say more or less there's there might be changes but it probably won't affect them too much in the long term mm. and the short term i can see you know maybe some hiccups here and there but in the long term they're probably you know the, they're probably just going to be keeping doing what they're doing yeah mm. well depend it really depends on what they're going to do with our next console uh we know that they're going to announce the next console by the end of the year. Uh, Dude, it's to where watch us, day, watch us day, tell us the Wii U is back. <laughs> the Nintendo, the Nintendo Switch U. Exactly, the Switch U, the Wii U. Somehow, the Wii U has returned. <laughs> as far as I can, as far as I heard, it's probably going to be. It's being dubbed the Switch 2. It's going to be uh, more improved. Yeah. Switch 2, Electric Boogaloo. Electric Boogaloo. Yeah. Um, the question is, is that is it going to be fully backwards compatible with the OG Switch? And that, and that, would, that, would, that would be an instant buy for me if they do that, but a shitty. Yeah. I've heard that it will be backwards compatible, like, and, and people are expecting it to be like the 3DS. Okay. Well, like you can play DS games on the 3DS, but you can play 3DS games on the DS. Mm-hmm. So the cartridges had a little bit of plastic on one edge, so they couldn't fit in old DS. Mm. So they'll probably right. just bring that little addition back for the Switch 2 cartridges. Okay. Yeah, and also it depends um, on price point. So. Mm. Yeah. Because I, 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 I have heard sorry. that they are going to actually provide a more, have a slightly more expensive model, like more in line with the uh, modern consoles, mm. around like 450 Okay. Uh, but it's, it's the real, the real question. Hmm. At the rate they're uh, at the rate these companies are going towards, mm. eventually they're all gonna just collapse. Mm. They probably won't be gone completely. Some of them will, but they are going. They're not gonna be holding this giant monopoly, this this uh, stranglehold on the industry. Mm. And what's gonna happen next? Mm. 
obviously well, it's going to be the rise. Sorry. Oh, I would just say, well, it depends on how it falls and uh, how, like, how it, the fall comes about. And, yeah. and what style, because is it, if it is a simple, like, investors start pulling out, uh, they may start investing in other companies, like some of the more well-profiled indie devs mm. that are making uh, multi-million dollars. Like, we could see Larian become a big publisher. Hmm. If like they may, if they release another their next game and it's a massive hit. Hmm. Yeah. Right. Uh, on the other hand, they could just be doing what they're doing for right now, just continue like this, and then they just run out of money. I think they'll pay for people. They just, you know, cut down half their stuff or something like that. Well, they're um, going to just start firing people before they run out of money. Like, the yeah. thing is, is that these companies have the money to take the hit. They're just firing people to make the money last longer until the next hype train. Hmm. Yeah. But uh, even if with the pi hype, hype train... I, I feel like they're just inflate. I feel like there's some kind of bubble. Like there's just a net worth bubble or something like that. Hmm. And eventually it's going to pop because I, I don't think you can do that. You can't do this stuff forever and expect it to hmm. um, keep on working. Yeah. Um, like, I don't know how it'll burst. I don't know when, but it, it it just feels like a bubble that's gonna burst sometime. Mm. Um, I I think I think AI. I actually think AI is gonna be a very big net positive for the industry. Mark mark, mark really? these words. Mark, mark these words. I feel like it will get like obviously on the short term. Bigger companies are going to use it as an excuse to fire people uh -huh. so that they'll be able to have skeleton crews that will use AI to supplement their work to be able yeah. to make bigger things. But on the other hand, the people fired and the other and the indie developers will have access to those same technologies or versions of them. So they'll be able to put out bigger things with your with your resources potentially well AI which is... means that we'll be getting bigger oh, no, no, good, yeah good. but which means that we'll be able to get like more and more double a stuff or double a quality stuff hmm. from from uh skeleton groups effectively like like this this is my this is my this is my big brain how I think things are going to go down theory. Hmm. Well, AI is already being like implemented already throughout like all these major industries and stuff. Like, well, yeah, but we, we just know it's, they're just going to improve on it, make it grow. Yeah. And do more things. There, there, you know, and there is always, but like AI always does bring up the topic of, you know, oh, the, you know, it could like, the idea that it's gonna, you know, replace, you know, you know, the job, the jobs that you know human beings had and all that, you know, that's always ends up becoming a huge, you know, debate and discussion. Uh, but like AI is already being like utilized, and yeah, you're right. It's like it will just like it keep getting better. Like, like that's the thing. Like, like, like. Like, now we're getting to, like, the whole AI conversation, but, like, the thing about the whole AI conversation is, like, no matter, like, it doesn't matter if, like, what your opinion of it is, like, it's not gonna really be going away anytime soon. Like, it's... Yeah. It's, it's like, what, like, the dam has been burst. Yeah. Like... Well, there's, no, there's, there's no building back this new you, dam. You could, you could vehemently disagree with AI, and, like, you know, I'll, I'll, like, I support 
your decision to have that opinion. I I have my own opinion on AI and stuff, but like either way, like it's it's gonna it's not going away anytime soon. Like like you you introduce these companies like AI and stuff, telling them like oh the computer can do all these jobs, and that way so like you don't have to hire as many people. It's like they're like shit. Why didn't we think of this before? This is great. So, like, they're not gonna get rid of AI anytime soon. Uh, yeah. and the, but on the, on the uh, other hand, sorry. Uh, no, no, no. AI um, replacing people is like, it's been a thing like repeated throughout history. Like, a new technology is invented, mm. and people were like, oh, this is gonna replace people. Like, and it does. But it also opens up new avenues in the industry, and like um, exactly, we, we we accomplish so much more in farming with a lot less people through like machines and other technologies. Like mm. uh, the cotton gin at the time um, caused oh, a lot no, of controversy because it could deseed cotton really quickly right. when I originally would have to do that by hand. Mm. I, people, people. Originally, before writing, people would they would tell oral stories mm. and have like all these systems through memory and through oral, and it destroyed. And when writing came around, it destroyed a lot of that. But mm. look at what we accomplished with writing. I don't know. I don't think AI is going to be as big as revolution as writing, but I feel like it. It is a revolution. Mm. I feel like this is going to be a revolution. For, and it's and while it closes down some jobs, it will grow. It closes down jobs, but companies and in the industry will there'll be more of them. There'll be more to go around. Hmm. But you know what? The, but the most important part about AI is going to be. Oh, what's that? It's going to lead us to the wonderful utopia under communism. Because why? Because if AI takes away our jobs, how are we going to get paid? Only solution? Communism! Uh, oh. Mm. Uh, oh, excuse me. Uh, not to oh mention, it'll create, it'll create even more competition. Because now, a lot of these workers... Who are able to just coast by because they have a not not because well that, who that else are you gonna true. hire like everybody everybody's shit I you know, everybody's shit and everybody's lazy who are you gonna hire somebody that's shit and lazy so that's well that's what we have available and now that we have AI right that's, that's better than these shit and lazy people right it provides an, an incentive for competition because now they're gonna have to get off their asses or. Mm -hmm. They're gonna be toast, right? Like, like do uh, it's it's gonna kill off a lot of the excess, um, like uh, like a lot of, like a lot the, of fat, yeah, like a lot of like the like the media industry, like like there was the whole like you know the strike, like the AI like writer strike and stuff, and like the thing was like, like I remember we were talking about we kind of found out like a lot of the writers that are, like striking they're not really that good writers so they they they're gonna be they're, those people's their jobs are gonna be they're gonna be chopped off first so, so people are the people the people who fight against ai the hardest are the people who stand to lose the most hmm. and if an ai robot can do more than you yeah so not so well like, you're probably gonna be replaced at some point Hmm. But I, I I do feel though that like at least you know I, I don't know, like in the in the good future timeline right like like the AI should at least it should yeah I agree like it should incentivize you know, some kind of like meritocracy you know like like it, it like oh shit like like let's say like you're like a you know like a, a concept artist for like a movie right like oh shit. Uh, they, they they brought an AI to do the you know the concept art work. Well, shit, I, uh, you know, at least you know the idea. I hope like the idea should be, oh, well, I should then really be you know, like I should be really good at my job, 
to show them, hey, I could do a better job than the fucking computer. And it's like, oh, you can. Well, okay then. Well, we'll keep you on board. You're you're better than the computer. And and on the other hand, mm -hmm. if that's the if, if that's its effect on bigger companies, mm -hmm. imagine what indies can do with it. They they'll probably still need to pay. Still they'll probably still have to have the same people around. They're probably not going to mm -hmm. fire them. That's that's worthy resources that you need. You need people, but they're just going to restructure it so you put those people in different places. And you get the AI to do the work that's neat, that would have been done by those people. So they, those people who are in a different places can do their so, job there, and then a robot can do. Hmm. So like the, would, the, the excess jobs. So uh, I I don't think okay. it's gonna be like that. Okay. Um, just because of the amount of pushback going on with the with right. the AI. But in like, general, because you still have that ethical issue. True. About yeah, about like about yeah. oh, about and AI. You know, like using your. It's but on the other hand, uh, mm. nobody's really stopped this stuff before. So uh, it, it is in, in a meritocracy. You know, it's not going to uh, be a meritocracy with AI. I mean, but I, that, and, and capitalism. Gonna... Sorry. No, well, here, we're not in a pure capitalist society. We are... No, there, there's going to be some uh, major government involvement in there yeah. and just makes everything crappy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And... And, and, because, and the big companies are going to push those legislations because they are going to be the ones who will benefit the most. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and... But on the other hand, will those... Big and companies also, be able to survive okay, if you're to that an point. Indie dev, here's the, if you're an indie dev and you are found out that the possibility of hiring people, because again, like even though the people who would be fired would be crappy uh, and crappy writers and stuff, they're still out of a job, right? Yeah. They're still out of a job. And all of a sudden they find out that all oh, these indie studios that, you know, that could hire, mm. hire them. And that, like, everybody loves indie studios. Like, they have... Mm. And turns out they are using AI for some jobs. <sighs> Not all of them. They're going to say, hey, that should have been my jobs. Like, the people who are... Like, the indie studios are going to get hurt a lot about people mm. being replaced by AI. Uh, as opposed to the big companies. Because... It's essentially becomes a gun behind the the head. It's like, hey, you better hire hire up those uh, people that got fired by the big companies, mm. or or we may like uh, just have a massive boycott. And I, I think right the biggest problem it, it's kind of tied to earlier You know that whole entitlement with the help wait two reviews. I think. Okay. It's probably one of the big things that could happen in the future, and I wouldn't be surprised is that there's gonna be a time where people will be disillusioned uh -huh. by the YouTuber reviewer. Okay. Like I wouldn't be surprised if uh if it gets revealed that there's like some cabalism. <laughs> Cabalism? For, like, you know, they're in, like, a little bit of, like, a cabal where they're, uh, like, a think tank group. And it's, like, I, I, not I necessary like... because of okay. being, uh, being honest with their reviews, but more of, like, trying to push something. I feel, I feel like that you, you have a right idea, but because of YouTube's decentralized nature... That can only work to so, to so much of an extent. Well, well, I'm I'm thinking of like the more legacy YouTubers, like long Fair. terms that people have built trust over the years. I'm not thinking of like a you know the new up and coming um YouTube reviewers or like the smaller people. All right. Like I'm thinking of something like uh, Second Wind. 
like uh, those guys and second wind i never heard of them uh that's uh yahtzee's Croshaw's uh new company oh like he left the escapist over a firing and he and a bunch of people who were former escapist employees formed their own company to be more and they have like pu oh. a public service and it's like a employee owned company oh okay and they uh post their financial reports to their audience hmm interesting okay yeah so like if if the ai is the future that's kind of the thing i'm thinking of is that it's not going to make anything better. It's just going to be a different flavor of worse. I wouldn't say worse, just neutrality. No. So, um, no, no, because it's going to be a different right flavor of bad. <laughs> so, no, it's like, yeah, but I'm going to trade in one right now with, with, with our, another one. I feel like it's just because our culture is kind of like not great right now, but it. And, and it. So any other culture was, you know it's it was still affect things wait, what, 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 you say and it'd be wrong? used for good or bad whatever wait, hold on. I, th I think i was trying to say something ultimately i think the the net positive of ai more than anything is it puts a lot more insights into these puts a lot more insight in behind the curtains mm. because because with this this sort of this cabal of nepotism mm -hmm. and uh, security, we kind of figure out, hey, we, we're kind of left to wonder, hey, what are all these jobs for? Mm. If you are not doing your job, mm -hmm. you know, if you're not doing, like if you're not doing your job, someone who or someone in a lesser position would be fired or fired for for not doing it well. Mm -hmm why are you still here mm. uh if you're one like if you're one thought uh in the presence of ai is to not be better but to try to come up with reasons to destroy it mm. it shows to me that you like shows to me that there is there is a fear there that i think the consumer needs to be aware of mm. Uh, like I'm very neutral in AI, where like I don't really want to see it prosper. But if something will stagnate, mm -hmm. uh, there should be some. You know, we need to have something. You know, a, a way in uh, a view. A view to see. I mean, we need we need something to shake things up. Mm. Yeah, we need we need something to shake things up. Mm. Like the main problem right now with the video game industry specifically uh -huh. is that um, one of the problems is leadership, and I personally think part of the problem is that the leadership is still the people who started these companies back in the nineties. And uh, we should, and, and like, and the thing is, they're all in like all and all the major companies, like, they're even kind of covering each other's back. Like, uh, when Phil Spencer is not talking anything about the four companies, the former head of Blizzard was trying to defend him. <laughs> it's like, what about? But I feel like at the same time, though, like, Blizzard's reputation has severely tanked now. Well, so like, yeah, but, so, but here's the thing. So, but here's the thing. It's it's My point is, is that a lot of these guys have okay. known each other for years in this video game, in this industry. Ooh, nepotism. Yeah, and, well, it's not necessarily nepotism, but it's just, like, they have not given the reins to the next generation. It's it's the current elite, and they are they're trying to be autocratic about things. Yeah, like they like, have, like, compared to Gar Sorry, they don't have the fire in them to make the care about the comp the the company themselves. They only care about their own 
pockets and their own friend groups. It, not about like, hey, we need to care about Xbox the company and how we can make Xbox good. Instead, it's more, how do we please, how do we keep our jobs and our current positions of power? Yeah. And we keep it by pleasing the investors. We don't want to get fired, so we're going to just uh, let go of employees. As opposed to contrast that with Nintendo, when the Wii U flopped hard, uh, Satoru Iwata got, took a pay cut to keep employees. I will not get the second yacht. <laughs> it was a tear. I would have called call you Luigi, but I only have now Mario. Yeah, but, yeah. yeah, that's true. But at the same time, I don't think we should be, you know, exactly, you know. N Nintendo isn't... I wouldn't say Nintendo's, you know, better or worse than, like... Perfect. Or, like, the no, they, no, they're better. I'm they, sorry. Yeah, they are better. They are better. They but, are way better should, at this point. They no, could be crappy should, at points. Yeah. They could be crappy. But in comparison right now with Sony and Microsoft, they are... <laughs> They are angels in comparison. Right. I'm I'm just saying though, like I don't. I'm just saying so. Still, like just because they're being better doesn't like we should. I'm just saying, you know, there's a chance, you know, people could the take this as like, you know, oh, so we should put Nintendo on a pedestal. Then it's like no, like, it's a, but like they are doing, they are just doing better mostly because they're just kind of doing their own thing at the moment, so. No, uh, but, well, here's the thing. They're operating Nintendo like a video game company. All right. Like an actual video game business. Microsoft and Sony is trying to do uh, brands, brand stuff. Yeah. They're not focusing on the companies themselves. They're trying to make it more about the brand. Mm. Like, yeah. That is why Nintendo is also so sue happy because they care about Nintendo as a company and they have and because of the laws in both countries you have to be aggressive with your copyright law. Yeah. But, but I okay, but I also feel like uh okay, I, okay, real quick though. I I do feel like we've been focusing heavily on like the gaming industry and stuff, but like that's still only like Probably because that's the yeah. most familiar to us. True, but like there is still, you know, but that's only like still like, only, like still half like the in like what makes up media and all that. Like, just yeah. okay. Yeah, Nintendo is very so happy, not because of like copyright, because it's not copyright; it's it's trademark law. Um, the Japanese are um, well, America and Western countries have fair use. Mm -hmm. uh, Japan does not really believe in fair use. Yeah. So, like, um, some guy was advertising a party, and he put Pokemon pictures <laughs> on the posters. Oh, no. And um, Nintendo tried suing them for it. Mm. Because, like, we own Pokemon. You're not allowed to use Pokemon because... Uh, screw your fair use. We're, uh, we're Japanese. Yeah. Don't they have like a weird exception when it comes to do do jinshis? Uh, do with do jinshi work? Um, uh. anything anything involving like a, a a licensed character is usually given out for free because a lot of do jinshi is not really uh, like. Uh, like fan fiction, a lot of a lot of it is um, a lot of it is like uh, independent work. That, that's what the word comes from. Um, so, so if you do if you do release a a, a work, um, like if you do release a work with a licensed character, they're not allowed to profit off of it. Okay, so it's. As long as you're not profiting off of it, it's perfectly okay to, to. It's, like what? Yeah, usually if you're not profiting off something, companies will leave you alone yeah. um, until certain, certain circumstances. Like um, mm -hmm. there are some guys making a Halo RTS mod, and Microsoft was fine with them doing that until 
they send them a cease and desist letter and let them know we are making a Halo RTS. So we're just concerned that your project will um, <laughs> conflict with our project. But then a lot of other fan games don't do that. They generally get left alone. Uh, and that and that is also sort of the that's also sort of the mindset that um Nintendo also has. Uh, mm. Like a lot of times, it doesn't really come down to uh, they need to enforce their their intellect, you know, their their hold on their intellectual brands. They they sue projects just simply because they have a bit of uh, a, a anxiety over their this when it comes to anxiety over their success. Mm. Like um, when they when they cease and desist the uh, uh, when they another uh, Metroid 2 remake yes another Metroid 2 remake like that was like people figured out that was mostly not because uh, not because uh, they they wanted to not because they they uh, but uh, sorry sorry let me just say this um Mm-hmm. It was because it was because they were already making their Metroid 2 remake, and they didn't want uh, a two MR to overshadow it. Mm. It's a it's a Studio One style situation. Oh yeah, to 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 uh, a okay. So for context, there's a third uh there was a third party uh so trent so in the for transformers transformers fans know about third party toys which is basically uh you know a company it makes a toy an action figure that looks you know very similar and like optimus prime but it's but it's not you know oh my gosh it's optimus prime it looks like optimus prime but it isn't but still he transforms like optimus prime but he's not and, uh, so that's third party in general, and so at the time, so there was this one company, uh, I think they were, did, didn't they like rebrand to like Zeta Toys or some shit like that, Nick? I think so. I, yeah, I, th- I think like they rebrand, but, stu- but uh, so there was this company that made uh, essentially a third party uh, Unicron. Uh, and they, you know, so it's their own figure, and it's not called Unicron, right? It just looks like Unicron, and it's really, and it was pretty good. And then at the same time, Hasbro officially announced for their Haslab crowdfunding project their own official Unicron figure. So you got two Unicron figures competing against each other. So it's like, oh. And and it, it didn't help that people were saying, man, the third party toy looks better than the official one. So that third party Unicron got kinda <laughs> kinda axed. And so uh but they, they but but uh I <laughs> they were able to get a, around with it. Cause I think like they then like they like the company rebranded. Like, no, we're not those guys who released a third-party Unicron. We're a different company. And then they released. And we're releasing a third-party Unicron. We're releasing. Well, we're releasing a, a <laughs> figure that's clearly a third-party Unicron. But but look, Hasbro, look. It doesn't have a head. So therefore, it's not <laughs> Unicron. So you can't sue us anymore, you bastards. And it's ha- just Cron. <laughs> exactly. It's just Cron. And they actually were able to get away with it. <laughs> uh, head sold separately. Is it, 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 it was like head packaged separately. Don't worry, it's it's not Unicron. So they were they were able to get away with it. It's. But I I feel like uh, with mm. the AAA devs having such like it was like what's not saying they they're, they're fearing. You feel like you get that they're nervous. In mm. fear about double A devs, mm. which probably means that double A devs have a good future ahead of them if they're scaring the triple A guys so much because triple A is it's decaying, mm. stagnant, and and you see and you see just keep seeing these double A guys coming and popping on the scene. It's like 
got so much. So they're, 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 they're the Novus Homo. They're, they're the new breed. But they're, they're scaring the old senators. Uh, I have to. I want to make special mention. I want to applaud uh, Shift Up. Shift Up? Because. What a, yeah, who because. Are they? Uh, they made uh, Stellar Blade. Uh, oh! Because, because of them uh, kind of stoking up the fire and letting fans uh, know. Uh, the what happened during the first day patch uh, got repealed. Uh, Why was the patch wait, repealed? Um, the patch, like the patch, was sort of repealed because um, there were some changes, not big changes, but there were some changes, mm. and I I believe that those changes were applied because Sony was trying to see how far they could uh, control shipped up. Mm. And then they got the, they got they got uh, slapped in the hand like you. Ah, mm. I lost money. Like with, we yeah with like with with fan support, um, Shift Up was able to to actually allow um, this time allow um, Stellar Blade to be be as uncensored as they want it to be. Mm. So, this this might provide a, a good precedent in the future. Mm. Uh, would you think so? Uh, exactly, because um, this is this is going like with with the eventual release of the PC port. Like this is going to work so much well in their favor. Mm. Oh man, once yeah. once Starplay hits PC, those those mods, man. <laughs> it, it, it feels like the. Uh... The double A games of the of today mm. are kind of like the uh, just like the big games 15, 20 years ago, mm. and that the games and, the, and that the game studios producing stuff 15, 20 years ago just became so big and so bloated. Mm -hmm. You know, they're just become stagnant, and now we got the new blood. The, the they're coming in. Um, you got your hell divers, your uh, what was Hi-Fi Rush? You sell a blade. They're they're coming in and they're coming in. They're they're, they're going to. I feel like they they're going to be the future. Hmm. And you know, like thirty years, they're probably going to be the stagnant guys on top, and they're they're going to have to worry about their hmm. Novus Homo. Hmm. Hmm. Man, don't the the. Hi Hi-Fi Rush thing, though, uh, honestly, I'm not, I can't really be mad, I just kind of, at the end of the day, it kind of just became somewhat of a comedy to me, because as soon as they axed the studio right, the, the fucking guy, like, in charge of Microsoft, he comes up on, on the stage, he's like, hey guys, we need games just like Hi-Fi Rush, it's like, then why did you, then why did you ax the company? So, that... I think it's that kind of line of thinking that I think Ninja Theory is going to be okay for one more project. Okay. Uh, even with Hellblade 2. Uh, like, Ninja Theory has always been... If you look at Ninja Theory's history, there has not... There have rarely been, like, a best-selling company. Okay. Like, uh, the didn't they do the uh, DMC Devil May Cry? Yes, Ugh. sorry, yeah. But, yeah. Oh, that was the one you guys didn't like. Okay, <laughs> well, they were it's basically the edgy, cast... it's the mm. oh, it's the it's edgy, edgy 2003 of... boot. Yeah, uh... a lot of the problems with that game came from because of Capcom. Oh, though, <laughs> though, though they didn't help themselves with the studio head. Got in the war with fans. <laughs> yeah, the first deception. The, but, the best, the best thing I can say about the DMC situation is uh, they were not the good. They were not the best steps to put on that that project. Okay. Yeah, like the problem is, is that it was like, it's actually the most in depth of their combat systems, and really, yeah, yeah, and. Apparently, Definitive Edition is, like, the best way to play it. 
But it's still not like Devil May Cry. Hmm. Okay. Like a, <laughs> like their first official game uh -huh. was Heavenly Sword. It didn't sell that well. Then they oh. did one of my personal favorite Ninja Theory games, Enslaved Odyssey, uh, Enslaved Odyssey to the West. It didn't Dang. sell well. Okay. Yeah, hmm. what? No, you said you I know, know that one. But yes. Enslaved Odyssey to the West, I know that one. Yep. Andy Circus, uh, by the way. <laughs> Oh, I didn't know. Yeah, he that. was involved with Heavenly Monkeys. Sword and in <laughs> Enslaved, <laughs> which you could buy on PC. Monkey. Enslaved is available on PC. Heavenly Sword is still stuck on uh, PS3. Hmm. Okay. Andy Circus loves monkeys, I guess. <laughs> yeah, and then they did DMC three, and then. And then oh. after that, they had to, they worked on other projects helping, like uh, the Disney Infinity games, mm -hmm. you know, like a VR game. But then they had a small te team to do Hellblade 1, mm. which led into uh, Hellblade 2. But they also did a game called Bleeding Edge, which was their multiplayer game. Hey, I'm, I'm afraid it's by bedtime. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, yeah. All right. All right. I want to mention. I want to mention really quick uh, because uh, Ching, as you did mention, you did want to bring up the the like you want to kind of diversify, kind of bring up uh, another piece of media. I want to re really bring up really quick uh, mm. one criticism I have of the major movie studios, mm. um, and this is also is the same problem with the game studios mm. is uh movie studios look look like they're throwing out money mm, yeah like all how much money they're like just dumping into all these projects uh in a in a post uh, minus one world that should not be that should mm, not be the same yeah yeah because like Godzilla minus one was like, oh, what was their what was their budget again? Not what? fifteen million. Fifteen million, like compared to like the hundreds and of million dollars they pump into all these movies, it's like, wow, yeah. Like, oh yeah, that's and, yeah, and it's and, and you're right. Like it does also apply to like games as well. Like like all these like like triple a games you see like they're like pumping so much money behind this stuff well part of the reason of is that 90... a lot of just it taking does... too long to develop same with movies they're like so stuck in the oven like i i when was the last time i heard when you heard about like a major game uh-huh having a, a quick turnaround from like the previous film previous work i don't know i'm i'm not really because I, uh, I can think of some stuff but it's all in japan so okay. that's different culture so i can't really it's not really applicable okay <laughs> but then that make but then that but then the job that makes that just makes you then ask the question, then why is it taking so long? Like, if 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 we're pumping so much money into this stuff because it's taking so long, what's... why? Why is it taking so long? That That is a, that is a question that ends up being brought up. Mismanagement. Yeah. Like, Halo Infinite was horribly mismanaged. Mm. Um, the Destiny games were horribly mismanaged, and like so, for all the money that went into those games, they f finally come out, and it's like the games are like developed for this amount of time. When actually, the the amount of actual development time they really got was mm. significantly smaller. Mm. Like, it, it's not just a, like a Western problem. Like, did you want to survive? Um, got rebooted. Mm. Like halfway through developments, and so they had to start from scratch. Because Final Fantasy um, 15 is another example. Mm. 
Uh, like, it is, you know, like, Habu is an idiot. So he's used to developing, you know, double-A, triple-A games. Mm. And he wanted, he went into Survive wanting to make an indie game. Uh. But because he's used to, and I thought, like, well, he must have had a bigger scope than that. And he admitted, yeah, like, yeah, he did have a bigger scope mm -hmm. than what an indie team could handle. So they had to re-pitch the game to investors mm. and then move it to a different team. And so when the game finally came out, mm -hmm. it was a, it's a terrible game. Like it's a it's a, a visual novel where you, across the entire game mm. you can have one meaningful choice in any playthrough. <laughs> Literally every other choice is meaningless. Mm. But one choice in every playthrough. I guess Cyberpunk was also horribly mismanaged. No Man's Sky was horribly mismanaged. Mm. They got better over time. Um, but something like Halo Infinite continued to be heavily mismanaged even after development. Uh. And I, I think it's also a problem of like a lot of game studios don't I, like EA and whatnot. They don't have much money on hand. Mm. So all the money comes from investors, which mm. is why the games are so safe, or they have um, certain things uh, crammed into them to appease investors. Uh, because, like, they need to make their money back. <laughs> yeah. and, and, but then the problem with something like Halo Infinite is, like, Microsoft has a lot of money, but mm. people like Phil Spencer are way too hands-off with Xbox. Mm. So we're like, oh, wh why isn't there another Banjo Kazooie game? Like, well, Rare doesn't want to make another Banjo Kazooie game. Um, and like, the fact that Halo Infinite happened at all after Halo Five was just like it absolutely shocking that they let it happen. Mm. And uh, it took Microsoft a while after Halo Infinite to finally get in there and kick some asses and like mm. kick out the leadership because like, yeah, you've mismanaged like, five different projects at this point. Mm. Um, like, the um, Master of Collection has gone a lot better, but when it came out, 343 uh -huh. came out and said, like, yeah, like, all the bugs that are there, you're gonna just have to deal with them. Oh. And then, the, I think what happened was, around the time the Xbox Series X was, um, the Xbox One X was uh -huh. coming out, Microsoft probably went to 343, like, hey, we need a good game to push this console upgrade, fix your crap. Mm. So then that's when 343 went back to fixing the Master Chief Collection after not touching it for ages. Mm. But then with a bunch of the other stuff, like Redfall, Microsoft was just completely hands-off, and Phil Spencer even said with Redfall, we probably should have been more involved. <sighs> It also hurts the fact that um, uh, Arcane Austin didn't even wanted to do Redfall. Mm. Mm. Like Redfall was, a, was a, Redfall was a game that was just slapped onto their lap, uh, and they got no oversight with it. Mm. So you yeah, have these developers because companies was into the live service model. It's like, hey, let's make live service games. Uh... Yeah, because like, like Bethesda was trying to do all this stuff to try and beef up their value before their acqu acquisition mm. because they were on the market in microsoft like they weren't they didn't approach microsoft they were like hey anyone want to buy us mm. and then microsoft came along that's why they made fallout 76 and why it launched so horribly uh. um, and the, the developers of redfall were like fingers crossed microsoft comes in sees the project and how much of a mess it is and either cancels it or reboots it as a single player experience but they were so hands off they didn't do any of that. Mm. Like, yeah, you guys, you keep doing what you're doing. Everything's probably fine. Uh, okay. I see. Wow. But I, I, I but mm. to summarize. These people are going to be eventually going to be gone or uh, diminished. Hmm. And it's going to be interesting to see what comes after. Hmm. Yeah, I, I watched a podcast the other day and they were talking about how we're kind of overdue for a collapse of the gaming industry. Hmm. And we probably really need one right about now. Hmm. Okay. 
It's probably going to be because, more uh, of a collapse of the AAA side of the industry. Yes. Yeah. But like and that's... probably... But... Uh, I, I want to tell a little story. Okay. So, Roman Empire. Hmm. Four hundreds. Uh-huh. Okay, before... It's 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 probably one of the sh like like at the time it's probably one of the worst places to live in barbarian invasions, uh -huh. bureaucracy up your ass, um, starvation, famine, stuff like that. After it falls, genetic records, mm -hmm. and they're tasting bodies and like oh, the height grew like half a foot after the Roman Empire fell hmm. for your average citizen. Huh. Interesting. And people are having a better life. The average citizen was having a better life. Hmm. Sometimes we... we, we the the, the uh, AAA industry hmm. is decadent. Gotta fall. Hmm. I will say that I also think that um, the very small indie devs are gonna get hit hard too. I think the people who are gonna come out unscathed are gonna be the bigger indie devs for the collapse. Okay. Yeah. But, um,. I really need to get a bed. All right. Yeah. This is, me this is a really fun conversation, though. Hmm. Yeah. All, All right. right. Uh, have a good night, guys. Uh, All right. Have a good night. Have good a good night, night you guys. <laughs> well, it's just the four of us. I don't know. It doesn't have the same ring as just the two of us. Damn. You're not making it. See, you're not trying hard enough. <laughs> I'm not trying hard enough. Just the four of us. It's really quick change. Um, mm. before we before we get to it, before we get to mm. um, before we get to um, uh, SGD's topic, I'm just gonna say this really quick. Okay. Um. So, uh, when it comes to for movies, when it comes to um, mm. when it comes to like non like let's non studio uh, mm -hmm. like entertainment companies like mm. uh, are you you're familiar with A twenty four of course right. uh, yeah, are I you familiar with play this movie. <laughs> Are you familiar with uh, Neon? Neon? Uh, uh, not really. But I think you were like you were. I think I remember like you were showing me something. They're like they're like releasing like those like new like horror movies, right? Yes. Um, Neon, like Neon. Uh, ever since they uh, distribute, like like they help distribute uh, Colossus. The, mm. the movie where I think I think it was Anne Hathaway was in that movie where she mm. is she is a uh, like it's, uh, psycho uh, you know, um she she's psycho linked to a kaiju in Japan and so ah! it, yeah it's a it's a colony where like this, this normal girl in in America mm. is controlling this, this this kaiju without like without her knowing oh that sounds, um, that actually sounds fun why have i heard of this before when, when did this movie come out came out 2017 ah uh, that's why okay that that explains that Okay, that explains a lot. Cause that sounds like a really fun movie. Like that sounds that sounds really fun actually. But uh no, I it came out twenty seventeen. I was uh <laughs> I 
I was too busy hyping myself up for the last night. <laughs> wow! I, t I told- I've said this before, Nick. I, there was a time where I genuinely loved every live-action Transformer movie out there. And nothing could dissuade me. Chance, <laughs> even when the last night was coming out, I was going, this movie's going to suck. No, Nick. When the last night came out, I remember walking out of the theaters going, that was the best one yet. <laughs> there was, uh, 2017 was the same year War of the Planet of the Apes came out. Like, why was You're I- You're going to be excited <laughs> for that? Well, I mean, I was, but like, but for different reasons, Nick. Nick, 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 I, I was hyped for a different reason because I just saw, ha, huh, monkey shoot gun. No. <laughs> uh. If I had my camera on right now. Do you, wait, you have your camera on? No. Oh. So if I did. <laughs> uh, no, no, that was just a time where I... I just didn't have media literacy at all. So, uh, but now I know better. I, I, I know better now, so. Uh, no, but now, now I'm, now I'm actually really fucking disappointed in myself. I can't believe there was a, there was a kaiju comedy movie it, uh, that came out that year, and I didn't know about it because I was too busy getting excited for it. A terrible Transformer movie. <laughs> What's it called? Uh, what was it called uh, again, Not? Col uh, Colossal. Colossal. So, uh, but I, I, I don't know, I, that was just a little tangent there. But what were you saying though about, like, Colossal and Neon, Not? Yeah. Well, I'm just saying, like, uh, I know it's like, I know you're doing the right look you, you know, obviously do not like civil war. Mm. I, I I'm with I'm in that boat with you. Um, <laughs> like mm. would you say like would you say like civil like at least having having created a movie like Civil War is a much better outcome than than a lot of these by these studios kind of just hmm. uh, abusing these franchises like hmm. especially Warner Brothers. Oh, yeah. Love uh, writing off films for tax purposes. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I remember earlier this year, like, they came, there was a report that came out that, like, 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 a, like there was all these tax write-offs and stuff, but then, uh, was Zaslov's, like, it, it income raised by, like, a 25%. And it's, it's like, holy shit. Like, dude, dude's a, dude's a fucking like Saturday morning cartoon villain right there. It's like, all right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna get all these movies axed for a tax write-off, and I'll get a, I'm gonna get you know that 25% rise in income. It's like, bro, you're a fucking Saturday morning cartoon villain. Ah. <laughs> uh. Uh, no, but like, I, I, I can see where you're coming from, though, not, like, and yeah, there, like, I, 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 I do agree, you know, I, it's, Civil War wasn't a good movie, but, like, but, like, I, I'm glad, though, like, A24, though, is, you know, they're willing to, like, you know, uh, help, like, you know, distribute and and produce like all sorts of like movies and stuff they like, they get like, they gave us civil war but like this is the same this is the same guys that help you know distribute uh 
everything everywhere all at once which is like one of my favorite movies of all time so like i'm i'm so like, uh, it, yeah like i i i do hope like 824 keeps up like what they're doing and stuff so yeah but civil war wasn't good why the fuck was it called civil war i'm going to just say it right there why was it called civil war Oh, I did not like that movie. 